Morning, or evening, Grace Brother, and it's great to have all of you back along with us here with our Word Awakening and our Friday study, and look forward to a continuing our thoughts about the revival uh, here this uh, evening. And I'll buy, uh, by way of a prayer request, uh, nothing uh, really, uh, really new uh, that I can think of right off the uh, top of my uh, top of my head. Uh, I've not heard how, like we were mentioning, uh, Sister. Uh, Sister Hickey, one of the churches here in the Birmingham area that uh, that we presented our work in here a couple of weeks ago, uh, had an eye procedure. She's actually a lady that's blind that, that had some that said something happened to her and has already had her left eye removed. She was having a surgery done on her right eye, and I've not heard how she is. I'll try to uh, I'll try to uh, uh, catch up on that as as well as I can. Uh, but uh, let's do a my pray for her nonetheless. I know she has a recovery ahead of her, regardless of how the surgery went. Uh, but to remember one another in prayer, uh, of course, my mother-in-law is uh, recovering, uh, doing uh, doing fine right now. She really hopes she uh, does even much better with the procedure, uh, that uh, that last procedure that she had here about uh, almost two weeks ago now. The physician told her that it might take a couple of weeks before she really sees a difference. Uh, but to that procedure, though, was supposed to help her greatly. But uh, nonetheless, keep uh, you praying for uh, Jenny Tyler. <clears throat> As, uh, as well, and all those that uh, that we know of that are sick in body, and of course, so uh, we're about to do announcements. Actually, we'll go ahead and knock that out at the same time, I guess, since we're mentioning it. But uh, nothing new, but the revival is here upon us, though, and uh, we will be having a revival this coming week on the 22nd through the uh, 26th. That'll be our spring revival, uh, 2021 spring revival, of course, back when we started this ministry last year. We also did a spring revival about the last full week of April, and uh, so now... Uh, doing it here toward uh, the end of March, and as we said, uh, we're just going to go with God with this, with our ministry. We probably will do one of these every single quarter, uh, four times a year, one in the spring, one in the summer, one in the fall, and one in the winter. It wasn't my plan. So like I said, I wasn't looking to do that. Uh, like when we preached our fall revival, I believe that was, uh, you know, I said that's going to be it for revivals, but, uh, you know, the Lord said, no, nah, keep doing it. So, you know, like I said, I wasn't looking to do it. Uh, but the Lord's laid that on our heart, of course. Lord willing, we'll be in northern New York whenever we bring our summer revival. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. Could be August, you know, or September, you know, before we close, you know, with COVID and those things are still going on. Not as bad as that was, uh, you know, some months ago. Uh, but I know, like, especially up north, like in New York, you know, they still have a multitude of things going on with that. So, you know, we'll see how uh, things work out. But nonetheless, I know that we are going to move this year. The Lord's already put that in my heart. I said that could be later summer, maybe more early fall, but, you know, that is going to happen. And uh, so we uh, trust God that uh, that his will and way just be done in all of these things. But to do pray for the meeting, though, of course, with that being said, uh, like Word Bible Institute, you know, has its own YouTube page now. But we uh, we won't be recording the lectures uh, for those classes like we do on Tuesday and Thursday because of the revival as well as the Friday study. Of course, you know, we'll be preaching you know, next Friday as part of the revival. And what are we preaching on the revival? Not really 100% sure. Uh, the Lord's uh, not quite given us that yet. Going to have something to do with the revival, though, definitely. And, uh, you know, we could even maybe kind of continue some of the thoughts that we've had here with this Friday study. But even if we don't, per se, continue this thought, I'm sure it'll be kind of along the lines of the things that we're preaching about here. About to just come on back and be with us, amen, and look forward to what the Lord's going to do. And we'll go ahead and open up with a word of prayer and get started. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the evidence of sin. Uh, thank you so much, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy and all that you've done for us and all that you're going to do. Pray that you'd be with us today. Just give us an unction from on high, Lord. Give us that which we need. Uh, just help us saturate ourselves in prayer, saturate us in the Holy Ghost, help us spend much time in your word, and help us, Lord, to be faithful and lead God and direct in the way that you'd have us to go, Father. Lord, just give us all that which we need, and may Christ be honored and glorified for all that we do have hearts and souls this uh, evening is our prayer. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. And so we have been going through the uh, contents of revival. And uh, like uh, last week, we uh, began this point, that's the point that we're still on, about how the leaders of the church and those who are truly spiritual must be ready for a difficult battle. And then we got in uh, to, the, uh, to the book of Ephesians in chapter number 6. Uh, the book of Ephesians in chapter number 6, and we got through to uh, to verse number uh, 15. Uh, we were looking there, uh, like at our uh, at our armor, and we'll turn there, and we'll just kind of uh, briefly just mention those things. We won't go into uh, any more detail. Of course, if you haven't watched that video, you know, go back and, uh, you know, start with a... Uh, I'll kind of start there with the first video that we've been going on through here. But like in Ephesians chapter 6... 
No, we started there like in verse number 11, talking about putting on the whole armor of God. Uh, putting on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Uh, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Uh, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the blessed pit of righteousness. And then our last uh, verse that we did last week was verse number 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And now we continue on here with our verse number 16. It says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word and help us here this evening. And uh, this evening here, we'll cover verses uh, 16 and 17. Uh, we are going to exposit verse, uh, verse 16 a fairly good bit, as uh, there's just a lot of great things, amen, that we can get here out of the Word of God. And we believe in expository preaching, and uh, we believe in getting all that we can out of the Word of God. You know, hence the name of this ministry, Word Awakening. As that's certainly something that's needed, amen, is uh, the Word of God. It's a big problem that we have, you know, starting with preachers, like I always say. Uh, you know, that is, uh, you, know, you know, that's just heartbreaking. You know, we have preachers, you know, that don't expound on the Bible because they don't know the Bible. And they don't know the Bible because they don't study it well enough. You know, that's certainly one thing that we need. You know, we need prayer warriors. We need Bible study warriors. And here, verse number 16, what we're talking about here, actually, kind of going along, right, right along with that. Above all, taking the shield of faith. So see, above everything in this armor, we must have faith. You know, not not all that uh, not all that difficult really to comprehend. Got to have faith. You know, that's kind of the uh, you know the central idea. You know, of Christianity is having faith. Like it says in Hebrews eleven six, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. It's impossible to do anything in the kingdom of God without faith. You know, and that's what you don't have whenever you don't pray, whenever you don't study the Bible. You know, you don't have faith. You know, this is especially true for revival and our efforts for revival and a revived church. We must have faith that God will do a work. See, there are 234 verses in the Bible that contain the word faith. 234. Like it says in Habakkuk 2.4, the just shall live by his faith. Believers are to be led by the Lord's guidance in their lives. And we follow the Lord in faith. You know, as the verse says, we are to live, you know, by faith. Like people use that terminology. You know, what do you do for, what do you do for a living? You know, what's your career? What's your job? What's your, uh, uh, what's your vocation? And I understand what they mean by that. But like the text says there, you know, we live our lives by faith. You know, the, uh, Excuse me. <coughs> like the Apostle Paul, you know, he also stressed this as well, preaching uh, preaching from the book of Habakkuk. Uh, like it says in Romans 1.17, he preached on that uh, three times. And we'll read uh, his text here. Well, not really his word, but God's, but him being the penman in Romans chapter 1 and verse number 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. That is, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And I don't have this written out in the article. It uh, probably won't be in the book that this goes in, like if you get our newsletter. Uh, but, uh, but it says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. That is, is written, the just shall live by faith. See here, faith is intertwined with righteousness. And that's also something that we're going to get into a bit later, because it does go right along with it. See, the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, that is, is written, the just shall live by faith. See, somebody who lives by faith, they live a righteous life. See, you know, you can't be double-minded in the matter. See, if you're a Bible believer, you should, uh, you should understand that. But see, if we're living by faith as we ought to, we are going to live a righteous life, you know, as it says there. You know, we're going to behold the Lord's righteousness if we're really living a life of faith. The Apostle Paul also uh, uh, mentions this in Galatians 3.11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. See, we no longer live by the law anymore, and even the law. You know, the law couldn't in itself justify people, but faith did. 
like Abraham, you know, lived a life of faith, as it says in Hebrews, and it was counted him for righteousness. The just shall live by faith. See, we are justified by the faith that we have. And then Hebrews chapter number 10, and verse number 38, so I believe the apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. See, we stay in this fight. We stay in this war because we have faith. And also going to touch on that a little bit more later. See, all aspects of our lives should include faith. You know, we raise our children for the glory of God, having faith that God will save them and, and that they will live a life pleasing to the Lord. See, if you do the opposite of that, that shows you don't have any faith. You know, rather than taking a Bible, you know, and teaching your kid the Bible, you know, and just giving your kid a remote control to sit in front of a television or, or in front of a video game system or in front of a tablet or something all day, that that's simply somebody that's not living a life of faith. That's somebody that just says, I don't believe my kids can be anything for God. I don't believe my kids can do anything for the glory of God. But see, we raise our children for the glory of God. You know, we teach them the Bible. You know, we teach them to memorize scripture. We tell them Bible studies. You know, we have biblical standards for them because we have faith that God's going to save them and that they're going to live a life pleasing to God. You know, we begin each day in prayer and the word of God, having faith that God will be with us throughout the day and that his spirit will guide us. See, whenever somebody chooses not to pray or to crack open a Bible in the morning or never throughout the day, I highly encourage people, you know, to do their devotions in the morning, at least. You know, like I know, you know, people like talking namely, like about people who are a secular job. But I'm like even pastors, you know, who have office duties, who have to go visit, etc. You know, church planners who have other things to do. You know, we all have lives to live. But, you know, particularly early in the morning. But I know like some people, you know, do that at nighttime. Like I used to do my studying at nighttime, like when I worked up, uh, like when I worked a uh, secular job because of the routine of my, you know, of my day. But, you know, but nonetheless, whenever we just go a whole day or what's worse, even a whole week, or what's even much worse, unfortunately, like a lot of people are, people who never read the Bible, who never pray, you know, that's just saying, I don't have faith that God's going to be with me. I don't have faith that God can guide me, and that certainly is. You know, like, like we've said here, often said that a lot last year, seems like my heart's kind of been on that in the last few weeks here with this ministry. You know, that, that's certainly why a lot of people never fulfill the will of God for their life, because they are never led and guided by the Lord. See, you can only be led and guided by the Lord is if you open up a Bible, is if you go to God in prayer. You know, you speak to God, God speaks to you through his word. See, and by doing that, we have faith just starting, you know, with our daily routine. God's going to be with me this day. You know, I continue to pray. I continue to study the Bible because I believe that God's going to do something with me. You know, God's going to lead me and God's going to God's going to guide me and God's going to use me for something wonderful. And he can if we have faith. But see, real faith brings action. See, we're not, you know, we're not, uh, we're not saved by works, but we are saved unto works. You know, like we mentioned in our Bible Institute class. <clears throat> the last time we taught, like John the Baptist said. You know, we do works meet for we do works meet for repentance. You know, we repent of our sin and we get saved so that we can do something for God. Because if the only purpose of salvation was to go to heaven, then God would have just took us to heaven as soon as he saved us. But he left us here on this earth because he has something for us to do. And that uh, and that simply all starts with having faith that God will do something with me by being led and guided by him. You know, by, by praying, by reading the word, you know, and that's what fasting is. That's what fasting shows. That's showing God, you know, I'm going to deny my flesh. I'm not going to eat or I'm going to maybe fast from some type of other luxury or, you know, a recreational type thing that I usually do. But particularly, though, food, you know, I'm not going to eat. Or if you do an absolute fast, you don't need to drink anything, <laughs> you know, which is really showing a lot of faith. <clears throat> but that's what it is. You know, I fast and I deny my flesh 
because I have faith that God is going to answer this prayer, that the power of God is going to be on my life. You know, like we often say here, you know, like with this ministry, talking about revival. You know, you know that, that's what they did through the Great Awakening revivals. You know, they fasted like the Holy Club. You know, John Wesley, Charles Wesley, George Whitfield, and then those preachers after them. You know, they did not, they had that faith. You know, they denied the flesh and they had faith that God was going to manifest his power, and he did. See, during that time, England was a dead country. England was a dead country. It was a spiritually dead country. But those men had faith. They prayed and they fasted and they lived in the Bible. They were addicted to the ministry because they had faith that God would do something. And you see that he did. Now, you know, we often say here with the air that I'm going to in northern New York, you know, that second great awakening in upstate New York in the 1800s. Like those preachers like Daniel Nash and Abel Clary who just, you know, spent their whole ministry, you know, just praying and fasting, you know, just gave themselves to the ministry of intercession. You know, they had faith that God was going to do a work and he did. You know, there were hundreds of thousands of people, you know, that were saved in upstate New York who were really saved, who changed their lives, who repented. You know, there were bars that were closed down. Uh, you know, there were, you know, questionable places, worldly places were closed down because the owners got saved. Even, you know, politicians apologized for the lies that they told and for the, and for the wrong things that they did. See, we have faith by prayer, by the reading of the word of God, by fasting. God's actually going to do something. See, a person takes up a certain vocation for their life, you know, having faith. That's where the Lord wants them and what he wants them to do, you know, just continuing our thought there. As we said, you know, you're led and guided by God, and you have faith that you're where you ought to be doing what the Lord wants you to do. See, a Sunday school teacher begins teaching a Sunday school class by faith, having confidence that God will help them teach, and they will touch the hearts of the students. See, first we realize that there's nothing good in me. There's no ability in me. All the good ability comes from heaven. Now I'm going to do what the Lord wants me to do and be what the Lord wants me to be. And I'm going to touch the hearts of those students and I'm going to help them in their lives. If I've got one or two people in that class or if I've got 200, whatever it is, I'm going to give them my all. Then, of course, you know, somebody like me, you know, we kind of talk like this. I know it's often what we think of, but, you know, it's the last thing that we included because it's everything, you know, our daily life, whatever it is, you know, raising our children. It all takes faith. But, you know, somebody like me, you know, somebody like myself, you know, who surrenders to go to a certain area, you know, to a mission field and start a church, you know, they do that by faith, believing, you know, that God will supply the funds to get there and he'll work everything out, that our ministry will be a blessing to the people. And see, there we see by faith, it's impossible. You know, it's impossible to do anything worthwhile. You know, i.e. anything that benefits the Lord's kingdom. It all takes faith. You know, and that's a good rule of thumb to have. That's a good rule of thumb to use when we, when we, have, when we have to decide if we, should, if we should do a certain activity or get involved in something. You know, like we think about doing something or somebody invites us somewhere. We think about an activity or something to do. Is this something that, that, I can, uh, that I can do by faith? Is this something that the Lord will bless? See, if believers use that standard, then their lives would be much more pure. See, that, that's why it's wise to just stay away from worldliness. You know, it's best for people to, to not even touch Hollywood movies as, as they just pollute people. You know, there, there's just nothing in faith. And I know that we're not robots and people need to rest. They need to have recreation. You know, not that it's wrong to do things like go on vacation. But when it comes especially to these questionable things, like we're going to look there about gray areas. But, but things, you know, especially like with Hollywood movies. Because that's, that's just not something that God can bless when you have questionable content with those things. See, it's better to watch, read, or, or listen to something educational and wholesome to rest. As we said there, <coughs> see, most of these gray areas are areas that Christians should just abstain from altogether. Because, see, we're not losing anything by staying away from questionable activities, but we could lose our testimony or more by partaking in something that we don't benefit from. 
So you notice what the text says there, the shield of faith. See, the shield covers the whole body. See, there in those times, whenever they used that shield in war. See, we must have faith to shield ourselves. It's, it's our faith, the pure faith, that protects us from evil. See, like the verse says there, latter part of verse 16, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. See, the devil certainly has fiery darts, and I don't want to give the devil any credit. I'm not a person that brags on the devil, that likes giving the devil any type of credit. You know, I don't, I don't talk about the devil no more than I have to, but, but we can't ignore the devil, you know, right now, whenever we do these type of, you know, studies and preaching. You know, we can't be ignorant of the devil's devices. See, just as was previously stated there, that's why it's best to abstain from unnecessary things, you know, such as Hollywood movies and, and TV shows for filthy language, nudity, and worldly content. <clears throat> Like it says in Psalm 101.3, I will set no evil, no wicked thing. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. It's just not being a holier than thou by excluding yourself from television and, and unnecessary things that bear temptation. See, that's just navigating the world with wisdom. See, it's just best to not have anything to do with those things. And if you abstain, like people that have abstained from it, people that just quit it, you know, they never ever regretted it. <clears throat> like First Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. See, that term sober means to be serious and aware. Not, not being excessive in recreation and leisure. Because, see, we are in a battle, and we must be serious about our faith and the, and the work that God has for us so that we don't blemish ourselves. See, we must be aware that we do have an adversary in the devil who is as a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. See, the devil is hoping, he's hoping that believers will spend a multitude of time in luxury and just browse cable TV, the, inter the internet, etc., See, that's just the end time that we live in, and that's where people just need to change. You know, rather than spending five hours in front of a television, you know, we need to be doing wholesome things. You know, we need to be praying, studying the Bible, teaching our kids the Bible, you know, spending time with our family. I mean, families, you know, don't even spend any time together anymore. Like you talk about leisure. No, I'm not all against leisure. I said we're not robots. But spend our leisure time with your family, you know, just talking to your family, catching up, talking about the things of God, doing wholesome things. <clears throat> you know, God put animals on the earth for a reason. And one reason why was so that, you know, we could enjoy them. <laughs> like you see, you see the funny videos I do, I hardly ever mention those on here whenever I'm being serious doing these teachings. But, you know, God, you know, gave us domesticated animals for a reason, you know, to enjoy. You know, I have two dogs, a cat, and a guinea pig. I'd have a tarantula right now if my wife would let me. <laughs> but she says if I get one, I'll have to put it in a build, you know, like in a garage or something. So maybe after we move to northern New York, I might get one. That is something kind of odd about me. I kind of do like those exotic animals. But, you know, do wholesome things. You know, spend our leisure, you know, doing good wholesome things, not questionable things. Just browsing the Internet aimlessly or just, you know, surfing, you know, like cable TV and things. So that is why, you know, we don't have a revival, why we have the mess that we have in this world. <clears throat> See, and vigilant there means to be watchful and alert for danger because the devil does have some traps, to have some snare traps and temptations. It says in Matthew 26, 41. Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. See, that is one reason why Christians must always be in the spirit of prayer, that we can withstand the devil, because our flesh is weak. See, and if we don't continually feed the spirit, our flesh will give into temptation. So getting back there to Ephesians 6, verse number 17, and this will be as far as we get here. It says, take the helmet of salvation. See, the helmet protects our head, you know, our most vulnerable part. Because, see, if you have somebody that, you know, bangs their head bad, you know, you're going to have trouble. You know, you're going to have brain damage. You're going to have a concussion. You're going to have something like that happen. 
And seeing our salvation in the battle is our assurance. See, we have a blessed assurance that we are saved and that the Lord will deliver us from evil and from the world. <coughs> Excuse me, 2 Timothy 1.12. Second Timothy 1, chapter 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. See, we know whom we have believed in the Almighty God, the God that controls all the universe. He is certainly powerful enough to help us in our battles. See, salvation isn't something that we're working for, trying to obtain. It's a possession that we presently have. We know that the Lord will keep us until we are called home to eternity. You know, as it says there, like the Paul wrote to Timothy there, for the which cause I also suffer these things, because we do suffer in this battle. You know, like me, kind of, you know, the most, maybe kind of the most extravagant, you know, example. But, you know, that's why, you know, God calls missionaries. And they have to take by, you know, say bye to their families. You know, that's why we do suffer. You know, that's why you work a secular job, you know, like I had before. I was in the military and all. You know, why? You know, there are times why you're, you know, you're sitting there, you know, by yourself eating your lunch without anybody around. You know, because you don't want to be around that group, you know, telling nasty jokes or, you know, whatever it might be. You know, we do suffer here, but it's well worth it. He says, nevertheless, I am not ashamed. We suffer, but we are not ashamed. Because we know who we have believed in. First John chapter number 5. Verses 11 to 13. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. For he that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. That you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. See, we can know and rest assured that we have eternal life. We can be certain that the Lord will be with us throughout this life and always give us that which we need in our daily battles. See, our head is the citadel of intelligence, like the center, you know, the home of intelligence here. See, that, you know, is our brain. See, in this helmet of salvation protects us from false teachers, from false teaching and deception. Like Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. See, we live in a time when people don't want to hear biblical truth. You know, we are a small minority as Bible believers. They don't want to hear our preaching about standards and living right. You know, people have turned their ears from the truth just over to fables. You know, however, we must guard ourselves as Bible believers and not give way to soothing messages. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Second <clears throat> Corinthians chapter number 11, <clears throat> verses 13 to 15. <coughs> For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be, a, shall be according to their works. So there are lots of false teachers in the world that are deceiving people, lots of people. So what they have to say sounds good, but it misleads people. As the scripture says, the devil himself transforms into an angel of light. So just as God uses people to do his work, the devil uses people to do his work as well. See, and the devil's in the business of deceiving people and leading people to hell. <clears throat> That's why we must guard our minds with the truth. Gotta have the truth, amen. Gotta know what the truth is. Like in closing, we give we gave this illustration a few weeks ago, and I've heard it, you know, myself from a multitude of different preachers. But that's like the people in the United States government, you know, who work for the Department of the Treasury. 
you know what they do is in order to in order to spot counterfeiting money you know that they don't look for other counterfeiting money what they do is is they study the real thing the real dollar the real dollar and they know that real dollar so well if anything false ever pops out boom you know they know it's false see that's just like us you know we know this right here well enough so that when something false comes up we can spot it not be led astray. So thank you so much there for being with us here. Good to go through this uh, text here and to exposit on the Word of God and get things that will help us for revival. A real revival. You know, we're having like a series of meetings this week. But, you know, we want, you know, just a real, real revival of people fired up about the things of God. So be praying for us to come and be with us this coming week. Of course, we'll be preaching Sunday. And then the following week, <clears throat> we'll have messages Monday to Friday. So be praying for us, amen. And I'll come on and be with us. And until then, we'll close in prayer. And also, I'm sorry, I knew it was something I had to make mention of. Uh, unfortunately, my email address was hacked. And so I do have a new email address that's going to be in, uh, in this video right here. Uh, it's going to be there. It's, it's Dr. Cooper Word. It's really the same name, but now it's now Outlook.com. I was using Proton Mail. Like if you look there, it was Dr. Cooper Word Proton at ProtonMail.com. But now it's Dr. Cooper Word at Outlook.com. So uh, just to make mention of that there. And so it was hacked. And so, like, especially if you get our newsletter, you know, that'll be the same name, Dr. Cooper Word, but that'll be coming from Outlook.com. And so if you want to get in touch with me and all, just know, like, it's going to have the Proton Mail address on the other on the other uh on the other videos the previous videos before that but uh, but i now have a new one and so wanted to make that administrative comment as well that's the thing about technology getting hacked uh but uh, hopefully this outlook one right here will work well because i've actually had an outlook account too that got hacked like a few years ago uh, but uh, hopefully this one will last for a good while at least. Uh, so just to make that note as well. Like I said, we do put out a free newsletter. Want to get that? You know, email it to us. Be happy to give it to you. Or like I've not said in a while, but got a prayer request or anything, a praise report. Want to contact me? Got a question, you know, about something, you know, the Bible, theology, whatever. Want to add to the best of our ability. Uh, so uh, reach out to us, amen. <clears throat> if we can help you in any way, just let us know. And for now, we'll close in prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. Thank you, Lord, for the goodness of sin. Thank you for all that you've done, all the blessings, Lord, that you've bestowed upon our hearts and our lives, the opportunity to come and preach here and to teach about revival and pray that we would take these things to heart, Lord, that we would know the truth, uh, that we would be the right prayer warrior and that we would live a life of faith, a life, Lord, that's pleasing unto you. Uh, just give us all that which we need, Lord, to do your work and will and just continue to lead God and direct the way apps to go, Lord. And our hearts in Christ's name, we do pray all these things. Help us, Lord, like only you can. And bless our listeners, we pray. Give them a special blessing. Amen. And anyway, thank you so much, folks, for being with us. And I will see you next time. So the day breaks and the shadows flee away. I am Brother Coop, and I love you, and I appreciate you.